Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Joshua. And there you are, hauling up the boxes of batteries. And getting those battery modules on board and installed was a major milestone in our electric boat project. We still had a few details to figure out along the way. It was helpful to map out where all the components will go before the bilge became crowded with battery modules. Okay, pause. The first hiccup came with the floor joists. Yeah, that doesn't fit. That battery should be snug up against the plate, right? Let's remake those hanger brackets so that we can rotate the joists 90 degrees. They're plenty stiff, and that'll leave room for the bus bars. Ready, set, go! So remember when we cut out the battery shelf? Now we have to find a new place for our battery. Is that really going to fit down under there? Um, yeah, well, especially if we get rid of the fan. Then there's enough room on this little shelf. We'll put the fuse block over here. We'll put the ground bar over there. Uh, as long as we can access it above the battery or beside that should be accessible there, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then that real fat wire going to the motor can just stop by the ground bar and then straight down to the motor. Yeah. Hello, motor. That should work. Where does the 48 volt, 12 volt converter go on that side then? I guess it could go right go. underneath the plumbing. Under the plumbing there, yeah. Yeah, that okay. works. So okay. here you're going fishing, and I'm taking the teeth off of these things. Uh, I need your help fishing no, here. No, Actually, you, you need to be the fish. I need to be the fish. <laughs> Catch me. How are we going to find that? What a mm. mess. Any, any help? Hold on. Let me get my hand in there. Oh, got it, got it. Oh, um. Oh. Bingo. Nice. <laughs> All right. Now, That's a big one. <laughs> this is the uh, Blue Sea Systems uh, fuse block that I'm going to be using for the 48 volt system. And this one here has uh, space for three um, different fuses. Um, you bring in your main um, battery connection here. This is one of those fuse modules. This one happens to be for 30 amps. I'm going to use that to go over to the um, 48 to 12 volt converter. I'll put a 100 amp fuse up here on the top to go over to the inverter and a 250 amp fuse here on the bottom to go to the motor. That's okay, they're both longer than they're supposed to be, but it doesn't, it must be some kind of real cheap polycarb. Usually polycarb cuts real smooth. Huh. <laughs> Let me show you the battery covers that we're putting in today. So Joshua's already put in a bottom plate. I'm going to attach the side panels, the battery covers, which are cut out of a little bit thicker polycarbonate. It suddenly got a lot harder to work in here now that we can't walk on any of those things. It's just a few paces left for feet. Port forward inboard. Ooh, there goes the notes. Now, let's see how it fits. Screw, washer, lock nut. Oh, I'm understanding why he left this job to me. are slightly smaller than his. Uh oh, no, that's not means. Well, what the heck did I do with all those angles? Right here. This is the corner. I'm gonna bust a knuckle on. Mm -hmm. 
Ni mm. modo. Here we go. Yes, it's happening. There's a total of 56 Nissan LEAF modules in each hull. Port and starboard. So that's eight parallel cells and then seven groups of those all connected in series. To make our 48 volt battery banks. It ends up being about 20 kilowatt hours of energy storage on each side. Each stack here is capped with another aluminum plate to sandwich the pouch cells and then the corner nuts are tightened on the all thread to hold everything securely in place. Then to complete the battery covers, we're going to need some more sheets of polycarbonate that wrap around on the top and on the front. As soon as we figure out how to bend the plastic. Oh, we can figure that out. And it might make it a good video. <laughs> but before the covers go on, we need to make and install bus bars, run some high current cables, and hook up the BMS. I am so excited about finally getting to making bus bars. It just feels like an important stage in the project. So I have these heavy duty copper, like quarter inch by one inch, tin plated bus bars. You want to have a closer look? Yeah. What the? Why is there copper up in there? Yeah, that doesn't seem right, does it? Alright, check this out. You made a giant mess. Here we can see. There are eight slots, one big hole for a cable, and then I just it's still need to tap that in for in the middle, and this will be all set to go. We're making battery cables now for connecting up the different stacks of, uh, of lithium ion modules. So. Put these where I think they belong. I to make a video of me. Mark it the right length. It's kind of a goofy way to, to do this. These kind of wires are so flexible because they have so many little strands of wire inside of them. But it's really easy to, uh, to break some of those wires. That's why there's some on the tray there. This is 2 aught wire and a, um, this is an anchor marine wire. Uh, so it's got some ex extra heavy insulation here for the marine environment. And they're, importantly, they're tinned wires. They don't, that's why they don't look copper colored. They look shiny silver color. They're tinned because copper gets kind of crummy in a marine environment. Um, so they put a little layer of tin on it, even though the tin isn't actually all that conductive, but it protects the copper from corrosion. Double check that I have the length I, I want. Put the flux down inside the crimp because my plan is to... My plan is to solder them, crimp them, and then solder them. I learned uh, yesterday that propane is sig burns significantly hotter than butane, so I have that little butane torch I've been doing heat shrink with, but it's it's like actually materially hotter with the propane torch. Can you see that jaw closing on the? Mm -hmm. right, push push that in nice and tight, and then smash that down. Ten tons of crimp. I hope my finger's not in there. <clears throat> All right. Let's see how we did. It's a cute sound it makes, right? All right. You couldn't pull those off if you tried, but I'll do the solder anyway, just to make sure that there's a good electrical connection there. Because 250 amps is kind of a lot. All right, that should be enough. Should be able to feed in more solder for a while because it has thermal mass, which basically means it stays hot for a while. in as much solder as I can. There we go. That should do it. Into the device. Yep. Crank now it. crank it. And now we're going to solder the other end. There, it's on the top. I see the 
saw her just came off. Be careful, Pop, don't get your hand too close. Push real hard. Can't. Try again. I, I don't want to do this. It's a little freaky. It's okay. It's safe enough. How safe is uh, it? I don't know. It's not that safe, but it's a little bit safe. Here. You ready? Hold that down. You just hold it steady. Where is that thing? I'll put this thing where it belongs to, to get the heat right. It's actually really convenient to have you holding that. Alright, you can let go. Perfect. Look at that. That came out really nice. No. no. Push it all the way. You ready? I think they make that so that it's not very easy for kids on purpose. Because it's pretty dangerous. Oops, I got too close. There you go. We're good. Already had um, ring terminals on them. Some of, some of the first batch. Then they were red shrink. So, so I had extra black. Is that all of them? All of them. Then I got to install the bus bars and connect the battery cells together. Those rugs from OceanVolt came in really handy for preventing a catastrophic short while I was working on them. But I also added some heat shrink tubing overall, but the very tip of my T-wrench. Safety. Yeah, we kept the kids out of this step. Okay, next step is connecting the BMS. Anyway, actually. Wait, there's hey, a green one. Show me your oh. tooth. Move your finger. Move your finger, I can't see your finger is in the way. <gasps> oh, oh. That's a dirty finger. Alright. So how do they get to put on? So do I put the locker on first? Nope, put the flat one on first. Flat ones? And then the lock washers. And then the nuts. Lock washers? And then the There you go. There it is. Almost. Oh, it didn't. Keep cranking, keep cranking, don't stop. Stop it, it's a surprise for you. Let's, let's check them out carefully. Everything back to the same. I think you did it just right. I got it, I got it. You need other one on. You hold it up. There. Ten. Ten. This one isn't. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Alright, now we'll use those to strip a little wire off. Here's a little terminal screwdriver. We're going to tighten on this one here, so turn that until it gets tight. Is it already tight? No, I don't no. think so. Is this like backwards or something? I just shrunk all the way down. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it did shrink under that. Sweet. Now what's left is. No, I got them all. That's that. Okay. So now I'm just going to draw this piece. Not quite, but good enough. Okay. Or are we still recording?